Welcome, my friends and sales professionals, to this episode of the Sales Podcast. I'm Wes Schaefer, the Sales Whisperer, your host. Today is session number 104, 104, and we have Mr. Jason Sheff. Uh, Jason is the lead singer of the band Chicago. He's been uh, their lead singer and bass player since 1985, so going on 30 years now. Uh, he replaced the great Peter Cetera when the band uh, split up, when, when Peter went his own way. Uh, Jason is uh, he's a cool cat. Uh, he's a straight shooter. I met him at Infusionsoft's annual conference back in, um, it was around April uh, 2013. And uh, it was funny, I had a booth there and I was selling my Infusionsoft book. And um, a gal that was working for me then um, brings Jason up. She says, hey, this is Jason. He's the lead singer for Chicago. And he had my book in his hand and he had just bought it. And he says, hey, will you sign the book? And uh, I remember laughing about it. I think I'd say it in this interview, too. You know, I said, man, you should be signing my book. Uh, but he was a cool dude. He um, actually did a jam session later that night, a little VIP party we went to. Uh, a lot of the folks at Infusionsoft are musicians. Uh, it was really cool. But uh, I spent a good bit of time talking with Jason then. Um, about a year later, he came to our hometown here in Temecula, went to the, uh, the big Indian casino, uh, Pachanga. And uh, Chicago played, and uh, he got us tickets, he got us backstage passes, uh, just a cool dude. And, you know, what we have in common is obviously Infusionsoft, but uh, an interest in sales and marketing, an interest in building multiple revenue streams, uh, an interest and a willingness to try new things. You know, he makes good money uh, with residuals and whatnot, royalties uh, being in the band and helping write some hit songs. But he's not content uh, to just, you know, ride a tour bus and, and play some gigs and collect some royalty checks. Uh, he's really looking at, uh, at growing. And he's, he's stepping out from what everyone else in the industry is doing. And he's been doing that. And, you know, he has rolled up his sleeves. He's diving into WordPress and SEO and blogging and social media, you name it. So, um, you know, I asked him about being a guest on the podcast. He jumped right on it. So let's bring in Jason Chef of Chicago. Jason Chef, all the way from Utah, singing the blues, singing the, the songs we love, out there making it happen. How are you, man? Welcome to the Sales Podcast. I'm singing my wish for the sales whisperer. I got the blues ba -da -ba -ba -boom. Ba -da -boom. That's pretty oh. good. We should record that. Didn't we? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, that's what that red light means? Damn, oh, I've already oh learned no. something, man. I've already learned something. Now I'm going to clam up. The red light's on. <laughs> so what is shaking, man? Thanks for coming on the show. My pleasure. I love this. I, uh, I just got done talking to a, uh, another bass player, uh, Bruce Hall, bass player of REO Speedwagon. And you know what you guys have started, Wes? You and all of your, your infusion soft... Um, uh, uh, internet marketing guru, which is so awesome. And I just can't wait to get into this call with you about this because um, you've inspired me to just tell our stories, collect the assets. And, you know, I've been doing this stuff anyway, all these years, but to really be following people like you and, and the gurus out there, people just want to know they want to, they want to learn and, and I'll give you the dirty little secret of those of us in the music industry is that people are panicking, beating their head against the wall, going, how do we sell music? And it's like, why don't you not worry about selling music and and just tell your story? And maybe you can fill in the blanks, you know, uh, creating an income that way, which gives you the room and freedom to create your music rather than second guessing and making crap music. And is that mm -hmm. okay to say? Did I just say a boo-boo on the air? <laughs> God, we, we can do crap. Other than that, uh, I tend to uh, edit it out. <laughs> Absolutely. Believe me, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty uh, self-editing. So at any rate, uh, so I just, just, you know, I, I, all my friends, they just go, wow, what a great idea. You know, you, you want to interview me? You want to talk? I said, yeah, just, 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 you know, I said, you're going to, you're going to see this goes in, like you say, so many different directions down the rabbit hole. 
And it just turns into a really fun, cool thing. Well, we spent two hours on the phone, man. And as I said, this is probably going to be broken up into a couple pieces. And it's actually inspiring me to put together a mastermind of maybe four or five bass players. You know, I just spoke with uh, my buddy, a couple of buddies of mine who, just like me, we were stupid young kids and caught some breaks. And the next thing you know, you have these great long careers. So... I think that's coming, you know, to uh, to just collect the assets, and then as you and all these good folks teach us how to do, is how to bring it to the people. Well, it's it, meeting you a year and a half ago. You believe it was what? It was April of 2013. Wow. Um, you know, I, I was shocked. You, you you come to my booth. Uh, I'm like, you know, what the heck are you doing at a information marketing, you know, e-commerce uh, conference? Um, and, you know, you buy my book. It was so funny. You asked me to sign. I was like, dude, you should sign my book. <laughs> <laughs> I should have had you sign one of mine at least. But, oh, well, next time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but people think, you know, they, they see celebrities and musicians and athletes and whatever. They think, oh, they got it made. And, you know, just money's rolling in. Uh, but regardless of, of how much money may or may not be coming in, it's still work, right? And it's still um, one I've always heard Dan Kennedy always say one is the loneliest number, right? It's, it's certainly in business. If you have one stream of income, if you have one means of putting food on the table, I mean, you're at risk. And so after meeting you and hanging out with you, I'm realizing just how entrepreneurial you are to find these other avenues to expand, right? So you're not solely dependent on one thing. Is that a, an accurate statement? It is. And I'll, I'll tell you, before I started looking at something other than just trying to to be a, a, a musician and a, and a recording artist and a touring artist, which is is really a strange world because if you're lucky enough to have actually had a long career, um, it's a little bit of a bubble. And even if you've been smart and you've saved your money and here's what happened is that all of a sudden – the recording industry changed so much that yep. there is this panic of records don't sell anymore. And so everybody, the lemmings have just jumped off the cliff chasing <laughs> after every stupid little bell and whistle. And in my opinion, the quality of the, of the product has just gotten so bad out there. You know, my, um, I'm going to avoid really going down the rabbit hole by just saying that, uh, it, I started paying attention to, um, sales and marketing and personal development. And it really came down to this one thing. If you were, when I was starting out as an artist, if you were thinking of anything other than just being a musician, you know, sales, marketing, you weren't for real. You had to, you had to do that. You, you took a sales job or whatever. But, um, when I started diving into it and seeing that the good, the good ones, the good people, you and all these folks that are really just adding value, you know, and I know that's that, that that's an overused phrase. And, but it, it, to me, it's really simple. It's like, I, I follow what I consider modern day sales and marketing that if you just front load the experience with tons of value, that's all it is, which means I'm just going to help people way beyond the call of duty. And, and I see these people flourishing with this, whereas recording artists that are sitting there still in that, I'm going to stay aloof, I'm going to stay unapproachable, untouchable, and um, you're done. Right. You know? So, uh, so I, started, I started paying attention to this stuff. And, you know, luckily I've had a great long career that continues to go. And I've saved money. So I'm not the guy who's sitting there going, right, yeah, i got to figure out ways to plug the holes. Although when income drops in, in uh, song royalties and everything, you know, you're thinking, okay, how, what, are the ways to, what are the ways to plug the holes? You know, multiple income streams. Let me, let me think of some other stuff. Well, when I started seeing that if you're just giving information, and a lot of people want to know, and you can you can plug those those financial holes that way. That makes sense to me. With the big picture being, what do I want to do today when I wake up? You know, isn't that the isn't that the ultimate question? Financial independence. Why do you want to get there? 
I've already had the cars and been on television and radio and all that stuff and scratched all those itches. To me, it's all about what do you want to do each and every day? I want to, I wouldn't do anything else. I want to create. I want to make music and I, because I see how it, it helps people. Well, if you wake up and you go, okay, let's decide what do we want to do today? I want to write a song for somebody. You know, I don't care if it gets on radio or not because I don't need to, I don't need to worry about that, right, if your bills are paid. Well, let's go to the next level down. You talk to the person that, that hasn't been so fortunate, and then all of a sudden they're taking really bad work to try and pay the bills, which keeps the problem getting worse and worse, that the gatekeepers who have the work are in control, and that's, in my opinion, what's really downward spiraled uh, you know, the art form and the industry. So my whole thing is what if we were able to basically tell our stories and create, uh, uh, you know, a new income stream for artists that obviously create the freedom to be able to, to make the, to write those songs and create that art. That's really my, my mission. Well, people, I would think on the outside looking in, like we see things like Beyonce, right? Earlier this year, she doesn't even tell anybody she's releasing an album. And then boom, it's like straight to iTunes and, you know, and it blows up. And people from the outside looking in and say, well, yeah, that's easy. She's Beyonce and no sweat. But, I mean, that's bucking the trend, right? I mean, she's cutting out the middleman. So in many ways, you could argue that's, that's even riskier. You know, because what I, I want to encourage my listeners, I don't want them to listen in and say, Oh, yeah, you're talking to Jason from Chicago. That dude can do anything. So, oh, well, that doesn't apply to me. But would you say sometimes the more success you have, the harder it is to buck the trend, uh, to, to go the direction you know that is right, even though it may be uh, countercultural or, or fly in the face of conventional wisdom? Absolutely. I think that, uh, that the more you have people, industries, depending on you, those are the quote-unquote gatekeepers, you know, um, that it, it is tough. That's why I've always felt really, really fortunate that I'm not, you know, I'm part of a band that's, that's a logo, and I'm a replacement guy. You know, I have my own piece of the history in it, but really I'm the guy who stepped in to replace somebody. Mm -hmm. And so I get to fly under the radar. I get to really experiment with these, these things and, and I love the technology. I really do. So, um, yeah, but you, you weren't content though, just to fly under the radar. I mean, cause you could, right. I mean, you could just chill out. You've been, you've been with them, what, 30, almost 30 years, huh? Yeah. What I mean by flying under the radar is that I can do all these fun little things like put together, you know, what I'm doing right now is I'm doing, <laughs> I'm doing a series of, uh, of four web webinars but I didn't even know what they were going to be. I was just doing the, you know, let's see what people are interested in. And I'm thinking, okay, well, let me show you how to play bass and let me show you how to sing. And then all of a sudden people, they just want to hear the stories. And so I tie them all in. So here's how I play bass and here's what I've done, you know, throughout my career. Here's what I've done with Chicago, this and that. But, um, you know, the title of the series is How to Be a Rock Star. And I, I avoided that, that, uh, I, I've always, it's funny when you're a kid and you're, you're in music, part of you is dreaming, I want to be a star or a rock star or whatever you think. And then all of a sudden, the minute somebody says to you, you're a rock star, you're kind of going, is that negative? Is, are they saying when I'm misbehaving or, or something <laughs> like that? And, and really, again, it's like, you know, uh, I, I never considered myself that, but enough people are out there that, that have told you and shown you that you've helped help them. You've helped uh, provide some, some medicine, the magic elixir music. So it just really it, it started inspiring um, a lot of thoughts of what is a rock star? And in my opinion, you know, because I hear, okay, this guy's a rock star in his field. You know, you and all these people that are the gurus out there. Well, that, that's not tied to playing music. To me, it's performing at the highest level, you know. So I, I'm intrigued by that notion of just, you know, uh, helping folks reach their potential, a rock star father, a rock star husband, you know, so, um, I'm the reluctant rock star, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I, but that's what I mean by flying under the radar is that I'm not recognizable to where if I do all these goofy little things, people are scrutinizing every, every little step that I, I make. So, right. 
Uh, yeah, but still, I mean, kudos to you for not just sitting back and collecting a check. You know, I mean, you're out there mixing things up and testing things, and, and I think you're onto something, you know, so. Well, I'm, thank you. You know, let me just throw in real quick to that, Wes, it, that, that that's exactly what I feel when I'm talking to my friends doing these little interviews, that we have the podium while we're here, you know, one day we won't be. And while you've got the platform, I totally agree with you. There's a responsibility. There's a responsibility to, to pay it forward. I'm, like I said, I'm already doing it anyway. I've, I was, I've always been very accessible. Um, I, I'm one of the early adopters of, of uh, being on the Internet with email in the early 90s and, 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 and AOL and CompuServe. And I loved it. I loved connecting with people. So I've always done it, but now that I've seen that there's a way, if you can financially plug the holes by, by, by sharing your life experiences, which is what I'm learning from you guys, that that to me seems to be the, uh, the magic bullet. And, and you know, I talk to other artists and they don't quite get it. So I'm really at the beginning of it anyway. It's only been a couple of years that I've really been diving in and, so like I said, I don't know what I'm doing, but I, I, I'm just collecting assets, you know, and, and, and organizing all the stuff that I've collected over the years. Right. And, and uh, you brought up a point, and, and I've spoken with others about this, and I, I like to reiterate it, but it's, it's that we don't know the value of our own knowledge, right? Right. Like you, you just took for granted your stories. Like, oh, people want to learn how to play and sing. You're like, oh, crap. They want to learn, hear about my stories? Okay. So, I mean... That is the asset you're referring to, right? I mean, just for tur heck, turning the recorder on and, and saying, you know, me hanging out with, with Bruce is an asset. People want to know, what do we talk about? How do we practice? How do we prepare for a gig? You know, like, that's an asset. And people will pay to, to learn that from you and, and enter your world. So, you know, now you just got to bottle it up and market it. Well, you're, you're absolutely right. And what I love uh, and I see in, a, in uh, a lot of what's going on in the, the marketing space of what you guys are all doing, of really helping folks find their voice and find, and I, and I know it's, it's tough for some people to think, I don't know any, I don't really have much experience that anybody would be interested in. Here's what I'm finding. And I, I think it's real interesting that, that those of us that quote unquote may have something that, that that's sort of obvious that people might be interested in. But once somebody starts speaking honestly and authentically, here's what happens is that it touches people. And inevitably, if they have, if they stand up and say, I'm going to tell you a story, it's, it almost is, it's a no, no fail that somebody says, I relate to that. Mm -hmm. You helped me. Uh, you helped me. You helped me get through something, don't you? Don't you think? I mean, it's like it, it, a lot of people just—they won't even take the first step to say the first thing. But once they do, and then it's on. Because even like, like you say, a guy like me, who you know, at first, you know, you might think, okay, some people want to hear from me. But I wrote a blog post the other day, and you know, I've been blogging a lot, just kind of you know, the, the, lately, and really sort of ramping things up, coming up with some products that you know what I. I think are products, you know, and they will be, I guess, but, but, um, but blogging and I wrote a blog post called how I got into the band Chicago. Right. And, and I just kind of started back from the beginning and I was thinking that I'm just going to tell people like, here's the steps that happened. And I'm assuming that people would say, well, of course you had a gift. And so you just naturally went to the places that you went, but you know what happened? I got that thing in my own little tiny world, so I, I haven't really promoted much, but went viral, you know, um, and, and the, the feedback I was getting is that people said, I related so much to when you said, I didn't have any expectations, or I should look at that, because I didn't, I didn't go to LA thinking, I'm going to do this or bust, and that's a valuable piece of information that, you know, so many times people they they have this this plan mapped out and it's like okay i got my finger on the pulse of what i'm going to do and if this doesn't happen then it just it's all for naught but yeah come up with some type of a plan but keep the expectations you know to a minimum 
And then you just never know where things are going to go. Well, when I got that feedback coming from that blog post, it showed me if I'm telling the stories authentically, the value is going to be popping through what people can relate to. So, so anybody just start telling what you've been through and it's going to touch somebody. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I want to shift gears a little bit. Um, one thing that I've learned over the years, and I think it's what it was kind of the tipping point to go from an, an amateur hungry salesperson to a professional was the willingness, um, uh, to prepare, mm. you know, to, to get ready for that sales call, to get ready for the meeting. Uh, and, and I've often heard, you know, that, I mean, the, the great performers, uh, script everything. Everything's rehearsing. And like the, a true, the sign of a professional is the willingness, you know, to prepare, right? And I've heard like Zig Ziglar always talks about, you know, he, he would read three hours a day. And even though he may have gave a presentation a thousand times, he'd still rehearse it for hours the night before. And I heard David Copperfield was so scripted, you know, he actually scripted in a, a trip, a little stumble, you know, just so people wouldn't think he was robotic. But can you mm -hmm. talk to, to us about, you know, how do, how do y'all prepare as a band? Is it, is it super scripted? You know, when, when you're hitting the road, um, it, I, I think, I'm guessing that, that y'all practice and prepare a lot more than maybe people on the outside looking in would believe. Well, it's funny you'd ask that because the scripted and really well rehearsed part of it is really the organization of everything. These guys have been together for 17 years by the time I got with them. And one thing that I liked is that we didn't over-rehearse. The band was performing at a level of uh, mastery that, 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 we, that we didn't really go uh, overboard with that. And my own personal experience is that music came pretty naturally to me, so I didn't really feel like I was working at it that hard. I was just playing... Of course I was, because I was playing every day, and I was playing in bands, and I was learning songs. So I was, I was rehearsing and practicing in a way that didn't feel like it. But it's funny, because now that I'm looking at the next phase of, of really treating, treating things completely professional and as a business, you know, there's, there's another thing that you can look at, at musicians and artists, especially if they become successful in their early 20s, like I did and in, in our, in our band did in their late teens, that it's fantasy land in a certain way. You can kind of, you know, you just don't ever really have to grow up, but I don't want to teach that to my kids. Right. And I think that that's a, that's a dying breed out there that if you, if you put all the pieces together, that's what I'm learning from you guys is to prepare more is to, is to, is to map the, is to plan is to plan and prepare yet also leave the room for the course correction and the adjustment. Yeah. You know, I love, we know what they, like Jim Marone and all these guys say, just like, it's not going to be the perfect plan. Just come up with something, right? you know, and then, and then, then course correct. So I'm like, yeah, it's funny because I'm learning so much from you guys in that area. So, um, but there's other bands like Earth, Wind and Fire that are constantly rehearsing. You know, we were touring out with those guys, they'd have rehearsals constantly and we were just like whoa <laughs> wow that's a lot of work you know? but they got a bunch of dance moves and everything stuff that you'd be good yeah. at well, that's not me <laughs> well that's because i can't sing i can't play the bass so i gotta shake my money maker man i know well <laughs> i'm a fan uh you just ain't right man you bring the worst out in me and i'm just drinking gatorade good grief i've heard that i've heard that about me <laughs> Uh, so, I mean, I, I appreciate where you're coming from it and you've talked about it too. I mean, you, you had to clean your act up, right. When, when you had this opportunity with Chicago, cause you, you talk about it freely, you know, you were just goofing off, uh, smoking dope, hanging out in SoCal and like, Oh my goodness, I've got a, I got this opportunity. Uh, but you had a great gift. Uh, and fortunately, you know, for you, it, it doesn't, it, it never felt like work. But, you know, I'm glad you mentioned, yeah, you were doing it every single day, probably yeah. hours and hours every yeah. single day. And, you know, uh, you got there. Chicago been around for 17 years or so. But, I mean, those guys practice a lot. And, oh, yeah. Um, so, I mean, it doesn't just happen. 
No. Uh, if, if you're fortunate to have a great gift, it can it can come easily easier. Um, but you know, would would you say those that that maybe haven't that if they don't have the gift, they have to work harder, and those that haven't worked harder are are in the dustbin? Yeah, I I think that um, I think just action. You know, I've been seeing a lot that word a lot lately. That that action is the key to everything. Just don't just like my grandmother used to say, don't just stand there, do something. <laughs> and and uh, you know, I, I really I'm really starting to to believe that. You know, if you, there's guys like Howard Johnson. You're too young to remember him, but he was a baseball player. And I remember hearing that Howard was not one of the great players, but he worked so hard at it that, you know, he got himself into the major leagues and had a great career. So there's one of those stories of a guy that just had to put in the extra work, you know. And then, you know, you see a lot of people that have a natural gift and they take it for granted. And, and, and I've been that guy at times, but I believe – the, the future belongs to the people who maximize all the, the full potential. Like what if you have, no matter what you're doing, just put, put, put some discipline and effort into it and you're exponentially going to, to maximize the potential. So, uh, absolutely. Yeah. They say, uh, you, you can't steer a parked car, right? No, exactly. <laughs> I think people just worry so much that they're going to make the wrong move, but, uh, you know, there, that's why what you're doing and, and providing guidance and coaching out there so that you're, you're limiting the, the risk and the, you know, I mean, if you're going to try and go and do it alone, good luck, mm-hmm. you know, just even like Facebook ads and stuff where you can just test things for really minimal to see if they're working, you know, um, it's a, it's an exciting time. It really is. So where does somebody um, like you, right, a quote unquote celebrity, you know, maybe an under the radar celebrity, but I mean, are you, are you hiring coaches yourself? I mean, are you joining masterminds? What are you doing to stay sharp uh, to expand, you know, your ventures uh, into into new technology like you're talking about? So far, I have not actually. Um, invested yet into like a like a personal one-on-one um coaching situation although i believe that's probably coming but i've i've purchased a couple of programs i love jermaine griggs Mm -hmm. and being that he's come from music and i love that he's just completely nuts in 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 how he uh he's into the ultra behavioral side of infusion soft i know you are too and anybody who's, you know, at the top of the, the food chain there at Infusionsoft, but that and, and um, you know, I've just been, I've been studying a few courses to just look at, you know, how launches happen, um, look at, at uh, proven funnels. And so I'm really at the point now where I'm just looking at how does that apply to a musician and an artist, mm-hmm. you know, because I love the idea of, okay, I'm going to put myself out there. And I just actually, in my second webinar last night, launched a very crude version of, um, okay, here's my membership site and a free uh, entrance into it to, to find out who really wants to engage with me. Right. And then, and then we'll, you know, I'll, I'll just go up some levels, you know, and and because uh, I, I still am trying to wrap my brain around. What is it that I'm going to offer rather than, hey, let me tell you some stories around the campfire. Of, of, but right. some people want that. It's, so that might be something out there, right? <laughs> um, so, I, I, yeah, that's, that's what I'm doing is I'm really I'm studying. Uh, study, I've got a, you know, done a few study courses, some online, so it's great. So I've just, I haven't minded putting the time and energy. I'm out on the road, I'll tell you this. And if we're tra- going to airports and I hear anybody grumbling about the travel, I've got my earbuds on and I'm watching a video on my iPad from some of the study courses I do. And just like Zig always said, you know, automobile university or airplane university and just taking, just really maximizing the time. Right. Uh, so what are some cool things that you're excited about that, that you've learned, whether it's membership sites or new webinar technologies or any little 
little nugget, a uh, little gem you've discovered and the it's in your tool belt now? Well, I um, here's a plug for Andy and Mike, but I ended up grabbing Webinar Jam, uh, you know, which is basically just Google Hangouts, but it's my first foray into the webinar thing. I, I tried um, GoToWebinar for a while and may end up using that in the in the future because um, you know the whole idea of being completely protected from from yeah. people being able to get your links and everything from Google Hangouts. But I love that it's a it's a you know it's a system that has. Uh, follow-up email so I'm just ex- experimenting with the whole staying in, in front of people as I'm ready to do a webinar and I love the, the, autom- the automation of everything I love the idea that I'm a, I'm a one-man show right now mm-hmm. but through things like appointment core as we scheduled our, our meeting um, things like that and, and just really putting the pieces together to be able to say okay I'm going to show up here at this time and if people want to come and engage with me boom i'll be there and and just really being able to uh, leverage the technologies um so that you don't need a lot of people because that's another thing that 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 uh guys in my position fall prey to or all these these people saying well you need me to do this and you need me to do that and i mean starting with um i had somebody build me a, a wordpress site that cost me four grand Mm. several years ago. And I thought, okay. And I wanted to make one change just in, and it was my fault, you know, okay. I want the, I want the, the fonts to be this color. And then I wanted to change my mind. They said, well, that's going to be $350 because we've got to change everything. And I just thought that's ridiculous. So I said, everybody out of the pool. And I basically just flushed four grand down the toilet, but I said, I'm going to school. I'm going to work. I'm going to set up a WordPress site myself so that I can change it on the fly. And just, that was the beginning of it. That was probably like five, six years ago. And I said, I'm going to learn this stuff and it's going to be tedious, but, um, you know, can't afford to, to take chances because people, they don't really know what you want. Well, how do you balance between becoming an expert in something like WordPress design versus subbing it out? Because uh, it's uh, I I went down the exact path there on web design that that you did, but you know across the board, I mean, we can't do everything. We can't be experts at everything. Uh, so how how do you know how to balance that? Great question, because I'm just at the point where I'm going to really start outsourcing things because my website sucks. Sorry, it's built on Optimized Press 2, which I love because I loved that it was uh, something I could create some easy landing pages and, 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 uh, 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 and a, uh, a membership portal. Uh, because, and, and I love Customer Hub, too. I'm, I'm a big fan of everything that Infusionsoft and that company. I love these people. They're good friends of mine. But I, I like the idea that you can blog, and it's all self-contained. Still, I know you can tie the two of them in together, but again, I just wanted to deal, I wanted to learn some stuff on my own. So I've, I've been uh, spending all this time, but you're absolutely right. There comes a time when you're, you're going, how much is my time worth? And um, you're right. And, and, and same thing with Jermaine. I mean, this is a guy, he says, listen, I just had to get my, I had to get my hands dirty and get into this and, and learn this stuff. It's not for everybody, and I'm not really a design guy at all, but I wanted to get the functionality of it. I wanted to get the functionality so that the whole behavioral side of this, because I'm into a lot of different things like you. I love fitness, you know, and and, uh, been involved in all kinds of different things, and the idea that somebody can just indicate what they want. So I I, I don't think, you you tell me, I, I think, you know, I've really spent like a good two years getting my hand, you know, rolling up my sleeves and getting my hands dirty doing this. And I think now is about the time when I'm really going to start reaching out and, and bringing some people into on all levels, right? Really like, let's, let, let's start looking at, at my strategies and my, my funnels. And, and, um, so two years isn't too bad, is it? No, that's, that's about what it took me, you know, yeah. and, and I, I find, I, I think we all, deep down 
maybe we're a little lazy, you know, mm -hmm. we, we want that instant gratification, mm -hmm. um, you know, so we maybe we, we want to be a little too trusting and, you know, we, we believe somebody when they tell us it'll be so great. But uh, it's so I guess at a minimum, it's, it's the trust, but verify, right? If you bring in somebody and you're not a pro at it, um, keep inspecting, right? Ask for reports. You don't feel bad about asking them to explain what the heck they're doing. You know, just like if it's your car, you know, yeah, you need, uh, you know, this extra Duma flitchy because it's wearing out here and well, you say, well, show me, show me right. a new one, show me an old one, show me mine. I, you know, if, if you're replacing my rotors, show me the rotors. And if I don't know what rotors are, if I don't know what grinding and down me, show me. You know, you don't want to show me? Fine. Put the wheels back on. I'm going to drive across the street because there's another mechanic there. So you know, at a minimum, right, find somebody that will at least explain things to you and not make you feel like an idiot for asking. No, you're exactly right, especially in something like this where, where you just have no clue. And there's there are so many, quote, unquote, uh, developers and implementers and, and everything out there. And, you know, the four-hour work week was a book that really planted the seeds. And I didn't even realize, because I bought it when it first came out, but just recently, um, I've, I've actually finally matured enough to start getting into what you're talking about. Because if you're not used to it, being getting confrontational can kind of seem like it's coming from an angry place. Right. Whereas if all of a sudden you just realize there's a certain level of respect that happens when, like, say, um, say you and I are going to work together, and I, I hired you, and I said, so with all due respect, I'm, 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 I'm fairly new to this, Wes, so if you wouldn't mind explaining to me, um, you know, how things are going to work. And really, since I don't even know what I'm doing, maybe we, we just really look at this as a, as a trial. Let's see how it works. Let's, 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 let's find the stop order right right you're you actually and i remember um seeing some of your uh some of your messages going out that's exactly what you say and all the good ones say that let's have a consultation let's have a talk and figure out what's going to work again that's that's modern great sales and marketing let's figure out what you need and let me uh let me just load tons of value for your dollar and and figure it out so you're not sitting there going okay great uh, this is going to cost you twenty grand, and um, you don't know anything. And I am going to tell you that I do. And the next thing you know, you end up with a website you can't change the font in, right? So, uh, yeah. oh, you can. It just costs you three hundred and fifty dollars. Exactly. <laughs> and if you want to change it back, it's another three fifty. That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cannot be taken. I know, man, I, I think we've all lived that pain to, to some degree. And, and I guess it's, I mean, it's just paying your dues, right? I mean, you, you probably had to sing at a, I don't know, a rotary club or a boy scout camp event. I mean, you probably sang in some places. Uh, I mean, that's, that's your version of, of paying the dues, right? Of paying the 350 bucks. You, yeah. You got to pay your dues. You know, I just thought of something and I've been helping another musician. See, look at this, Wes. I'm actually, I know how this works. I'm building something for myself, and then I'm going to end up being a consultant for other musicians. I say, I know how this stuff works. Oh, yeah. and, you know, the next thing you know, it's like, hey, do one for me. Well, I'm already getting some friends going, help me, you know, with my blog. And I found something that I think is really probably ground zero, the most important thing. And you can correct me or tell me if I'm on the right path with this, but. The guy's put together a WordPress site, and he's you know he he's he's automatically thinking I got to get this right I got to get this ready and I said don't wait please I said doesn't I said I can point you to some real ugly sites where these guys are really doing well financially. Yep. I said here's what you need to do, in my opinion, and I'm not I'm not <laughs> dem, I'm not show, I'm not going to show you the dollar figure, but here's from what I've seen. And the, and the reaction that I get when I do this, I said, bro, if you can do this, because you're a great storyteller, and he is, I said, go into your WordPress site. You don't even have to publish these and start telling your stories in these posts and just stack them up. 
which is basically telling your stories. I said, each one of these things is an asset. Mm -hmm. You know, just start. So if anybody's starting and they're going, I don't know what to do, just make sure you're telling your story. Right. Capture that, right? Because then all of a sudden you've got blog posts, which the next thing I know, he's, he puts a, a link to a YouTube video up on Facebook. And of course, it goes ballistic. And I said, bro, embed that in a blog post and put the link on Facebook. So they have to go to your blog post to see the video, which has your lead capture of come on the road with me, blah, blah, blah. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it's a wasted opportunity. I said, it's not going to happen today but what if facebook goes under tomorrow and you mm. have no way to talk to these people so i said get the get the get the wordpress side up don't worry about what it looks like yep yet but just write your stories get your stories down because that's your anybody like we talked earlier wes anybody who thinks that they don't have anything to offer guarantee you start telling your stories yep and people will get the value out of it. And then you can worry about what to do with it later because they'll find you and they'll say, Wes, help me get this out there. Yeah, and sometimes just sounding it out uh, helps, mm -hmm. you know. And, um, you know, I always tell people I, I'm out teaching stuff that I want to learn, you know. And right. when I am when I'm put it down and, and I'm going to be teaching it, then you know what? I prepare extra hard to make sure I know that topic. So I benefit from teaching others. Uh, and you know what, if you need a little bit of pressure, then fine, draw that line in the sand, set a date, say, I'm going to teach a, I'm going to lead a topic on this, you know, session on, on this topic. And you know what? Okay. So two people show, Hey, I, I've, I've held webinars where nobody showed up. Mm -hmm. right? So it happened. So I, I log in, I wait 10 minutes. Say, okay. Nobody's here, you know, done. And then I go back and look back and say, all right, what did I do? You know, mm -hmm. how can I clean that up? You know, mm -hmm. and then, you know, the last big one I did, I had uh, good grief, 800 and some odd people register, 160 something show up, Wow, That's you know, great. and mm -hmm. made a ton of sales. So That's great. it wasn't the first time I did it, though. <laughs> right. Um, you well, that's a, let me jump in real quick. And, and, and here's here's another thing that I've been just kind of getting my mindset around is that even if nobody shows up, like even like with these webinar jam things, I'm collecting the asset of a performance. So I'm looking at it like that. So that way it's kind of getting back to my blog post of how I got into the band Chicago. No expectations. It's hard not to. I know when people go, I gotta make some money, I gotta put something out there. But if you're every moment is not being wasted, you can look at it like that. I love what you just said. I'm teaching people because I wanna learn this stuff. And that's what all the greats were saying anyway, like Jim Rohn and, and Zig, right? They're all just sharing their stuff, and they're all learning and, and action. They're, 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 they're taking some action. And so um, I remember I got, a, I got an unsubscribe the other day because I just launched these webinars. What a jerk. <laughs> the ego, I know, just starts going, <laughs> everyone's going to want this. But the minute you start going outside of your, your, your warm market and your people, and they just kind of stumble into you, and the next thing I know, I've got these three emails with this – indoctrination of like, here's who I am. And they're like, I don't care about that. So I wanted to see your, your newsletter. Go, Oops, I better tweak this up. You know, because once you start going out and you're, and you're, you're reaching people that know nothing about you, you got to be careful, right? You don't want to be rushing in. And I can, I don't like Chicago's music. <laughs> you know, don't, don't play me that video. <laughs> right. Yeah. Double jerk. Exactly. Double unsubscribe, unsubscribe them and block them. That's what you do. <laughs> exactly. Then, then you call up um, uh, Tim Cook at Apple, and mm -hmm. you say, "Look, you did it for you too, so I want you to push all of my songs to that dude's iPod." <laughs> How funny is that? How that happened? And then they apologized for it because it's. And, and I love what Bono said. He goes, "He goes, yeah." He goes, "There's a bit of arrogance there, thinking that everyone's going to want to listen to our record." And they're going, "I don't want your record." Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Even even the the mighty U two has haters. Absolutely, you know, it's a lesson there. I mean, you got to have some thick skin if you're going to do anything of any significance. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. Well, I'm preaching to the choir, right? It's like the minute you pop your head up, you know. But I love, you know, lately I've in in all the trainings, you know, uh, the gurus are, are really stressing: take a stand. 
You want to repel the people that shouldn't be around. You don't worry about that. You know, because you can, you can, you can have a, an incredible existence if you just find who your friends are and associate with them. Right. Right. You know, because uh, in our business, it was always about, yeah, I want everybody to like me. Good luck, man. And it's just gotten to the point now with like YouTube and everything. You put, you know, you put yourself out there and your you, whatever it is, your your videos, our music videos, and it's like, uh, boy, the last couple of generations have really turned things into uh, whatever happened to manners. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? If you want to lose all faith in humanity, go <laughs> go, go read YouTube comments. <laughs> wow. It's like, what's your contribution? Oh, my gosh. Everybody's right. a critic, huh? Well, it's not just that. It's more like this, this, this desperate seeking of attention that, like, you know, there's no value added. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, that's a whole other rabbit hole we can go down of just the influence of, of negativity. But let me, let me throw this out there real quick because... This is a rabbit hole. Like, you know, I was talking to Tris, our drummer, recently about how easy it is to get sucked into negativity. You know, and it's like you and I can be sitting here talking about this, Wes, and go, we know it's not good for us. So it's like, let's not go to YouTube and this and that. And all of a sudden, we get off this call and something happens. You know, maybe one of your videos, I go to YouTube and just get sucked into the negative. Like, all of a sudden, there's something and go, why is that? We just talked about knowing it's not, we're smarter than that. And I read something recently that makes so much sense to me. We're not born to be happy. We're born to survive. Any animal that comes onto this planet is searching for the danger. You have to. Where's the saber-toothed tiger? It's in our DNA. Yep. That liberated me. When I started, when I started thinking of that, I go, so don't, 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 uh, don't beat yourself up over being attracted to it. Just understand that it's in our DNA. Let's pause for a second and ask ourselves, is there a sab saber-toothed tiger in this room? There might be one down the street, but there's nothing right here. So let's realize we're safe. And so we can start thinking for a second yep. and, and whatever it is, searching for some happiness. or But, but so we're not this reactionary, um, instinct-driven animal. Right. And I don't know what that has to do with our business, but uh, I think it's just... Well, it, it is important because, I mean, a lot of what I get into, I, in my sales training, I always tell people, you know, they, they'll ask me, like, give me some lines so I can overcome objections and handle gatekeepers or whatever, and it's like, I, I'll give them a few little nuggets, kind of some tried and true things, you know, I guess, kind of like, you know, you're playing music, you gotta, you gotta know your chords, right? And so uh -huh. from there, you can kind of, you can ad lib from there, but, but I tell them, I, I don't, I don't give them the lines, so they can go regurgitate them. I give them so they, those, they have some confidence so they can relax a little bit. So yeah. when, they, when they do pick up the phone or somebody asks them a question, they, they can reply and feel good about it and then build that confidence. Because at the end of the day, all of this sales training and stuff is all about giving them the confidence to be present in the moment. Mm -hmm. Right? And then... You know, because I, I can imagine, like in music, y'all throw in some some ad libs, whatever you you want to call it, that y'all didn't prepare for, but you just you were in the zone. It's like hell, run with it, brother. You know, and, and you right. get this big lick, and it's like where that come from? Like I don't know, but you were prepared, and right. you, you were in the moment, and you were relaxed, and you let relaxed. that inspiration come through. So. I mean, I think what you mentioned is super important because we are, we're all so wound up, right? People that are tense in their neck, they're grinding their teeth, they got headaches, they're popping pills, you know, they're popping, mon drinking monsters all the time. And because I think they all feel like there's a saber toothed tiger around every corner. Yeah. And you're not going to perform at your highest level. Right. That way you're not going to be, you're not going to reach your rock star potential by being tense. and Here's another, you know, let's go back to uh, the great Dale Carnegie book how to stop worrying and start living mm -hmm. the great companion to how to win friends. Right. What's the, the broad stroke of that book is what's the worst thing that could happen yep. if you're not, if I'm not going to be dead or in jail, that's livable. Cause then I can, can come up with something tomorrow or, or after whatever it is that I quote unquote failed in. So, you know, uh, Two, two things. You just inspired me, man. 
<laughs> is is uh, trying. And I'm, I'm, I'm trying to put myself in in the shoes of somebody who might be coming to you saying, "Give me a nugget because I got to go make a sales call." How about leaving the expectation down to a minimum? So that's a tough thing. I got to make a sale because I am going to lose my house, or like Zig has to go and pick his his wife and baby up from the hospital and needs yep. to make a sale. Go make a sale and make the money. Okay, get front but of he, the commission. <laughs> but even still. In order to perform at your best level, you hopefully you're going to have to try and find that zone and, and get relaxed. So what about a, a mental nugget of what's the worst thing that could happen? I'm not going to die. I may not be able to get my kid out of the, you know my wife and kid out of the hospital today, but I'm not going to die, which means I have another shot. That's relaxing. Yeah. You know, and 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 leave the expectation. You know, that's a tough thing. Oh, but I love studying that. That's what I've learned from the books and, and getting into sales and marketing is that when the expectation is is really low to none and you know that you're, again, you've put the time into it. I've put the time into this. If my expectation is like whatever happens, happens, and I'm still going to survive, I can do a lot better. Mm-hmm. The, uh... Did, were there ever any any flops? I mean, you can talk about maybe. I know in music, certainly. I mean, growing up through the ages, I mean, you, you were you were there when, you know, you had the big record labels and they drove everything and the big production. But then, you know, did y'all have a song or an album come out that just didn't do as well and you got panned? And you know, how did you how do you recover from that? Yeah. Okay, that's a great question. Luckily, when I joined the band, they were they were peaking in terms yeah. of commercial success they just come off of chicago 17 so you're the inspiration hard habit to break dominating the radio hard hard to say i'm sorry it was still being played a lot so all of a sudden this stupid snot-nosed kid and not only like you were saying smoking weed but coke-nosed kid sorry but i'm just gonna throw it out mm-hmm. there gets this opportunity to to be the lead singer the tenor lead vocalist and and you're right part of my story is like okay, now you better get it together. So how do you do that? I reached out and asked for help, you know. But we, we made that record, the first album, Chicago 18, and so Will You Still Love Me was the single that I sang, and so it was on the heels of all that other stuff. It was a big hit. So I had this feeling of that I was I pulled it off. And I knew I could in the studio. That was my wheelhouse in the recording studio. Okay. You know, that was, a, that was a, a real natural place for me. So... Coming on the heels of, of their other big records, it was awesome because, boom, it was up and running. But the live thing, you know, in a sense, I wasn't really 100% prepared and ready right. to be a, a, a lead vocalist and a front man, center stage. Yep. Right? Um, so luckily, we recorded the album first because I... I got that out of the way. If we had gone out on the road first, maybe they would have said, <laughs> you don't even want to give them, a, give them a chance. Although funny now, when you look back on it, it wasn't as bad as I remember. It wasn't, you know, as great as I'd like it to be. But, but at any rate, we go and make another record. Um, Chicago 19 uh, had a couple of huge hits that Bill Champlin sang. And then I wrote, co-wrote a song called What Kind of Man Would I Be? Um, that was a big hit for us, number five. So I'm really feeling comfortable that I'm that I'm in this, and it's, I'm not I'm not going to be kicked out. We did Arsenio Hall for the next uh, album, Chicago 21. We had a single, and I crashed and burned on it. Man, it was it was that moment that during rehearsal I felt a little tense. But once we record, once we, we did the performance, I felt like Archie Bunker in that one episode where he's on television and, and he can't speak, right? And he just, he's frozen. I felt like that. I literally couldn't breathe. And I remembered. And this is next, like while you're performing or like right after you finished? During. Oh. During. I mean, I'm, for all you listeners out there, just YouTube Chicago Arsenio Hall. And you'll see it. <laughs> and so, but the funny thing is, though, Wes, now, now the standard has plummeted so much of like what people can do live that it isn't actually that bad compared to like, you know, I've been a lot worse since then, you know, and I've seen a lot worse. But at the time, the standard was so high. If you're going to, you're going to go on television, you know, and there's your shot. I think that's the point. There's your shot. 
And I didn't, I was not living up to the rock star potential of performing at the highest level. And I remembered having a conversation the next day with one of the guys. And he, he literally said to me, I hope that didn't kill our career. And I was like, it took years to overcome that. Luckily, we we kept going, and then we did. So, what did, was it? Your performance individually, or the bands collectively? It was mine. It was mine. We had just we had only rehearsed this. There, okay. I believe I believe we were under rehearsed, but that's making an excuse of blaming anything other than myself. So, I'm going to take full responsibility that I was uncomfortable and not great, but. That goes to your earlier uh, point of prepare. Mm-hmm. I, I believe we were underprepared, and so I didn't have the confidence, but that's an excuse again. But again, if we're, you're looking at the whole thing, make sure you're ready. Make sure right. you prepare for this. So we did that, and, and I remember at the time I was in phenomenal shape. And I remember talking to our manager, and, 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 and I said, but I looked good. And he said the greatest thing. He goes, hey, man, it's not a handicapped league. <laughs> and I went, whoa. So it took like a good two years. We finally got to do the Tonight Show with Jay Leno in Chicago. And that's probably on YouTube, too. And it wasn't, I didn't light the world on fire, but at least I felt like I wasn't crashing and burning. <laughs> so, it was the, you know, so the point is, you know, that was a, and, and that album flopped, Chicago 21. So, so it didn't make me feel like um, that I, that it was all my fault. And luckily, it wasn't Chicago 18, because if that failed, and that was my first one, I wouldn't even be talking to you right now. But, but um, so those are the those are the those are the failures that Mm -hmm. you got it. You got to, you got to. So were were you just not comfortable on TV? Like was that a kind of a new thing for you? And that's you think that it was just. We did one thing before that, which was Solid Gold. And that'll be on YouTube. <laughs> that, that's lip syncing, and boy, I killed it. That's like being a, a plus two handicapped so golfer on the range, so right? You were lip syncing back then on on Solid Gold. That was the show. It yeah. was a, it was a lip sync. Uh-huh. But then once we did the first time, I was on television to have to sing live. Oh man, that was oh. Uh, and actually, what happened? I'm sorry to, to go on a little bit of a rampage. We did the rehearsal, and apparently, it went pretty decent. And so we're walking back to our dressing room, and this big security guy, the security guard with a big blockhead-looking guy, he looks at me as I, when I walk by, and he says, this is going to be good for you guys. And I'm going, Pfft. saying to myself, well, yeah, I know. I know. And he goes, he goes, national television. Um, and that just that choked me up. And then he goes, worldwide for that matter. And that's all I needed to hear. It was like, I just could not stop thinking about it, man. Oh, wow. Choked up, man. So go watch it. You'll get a kick out of it. <laughs> so you had been, so you'd already been doing this gig, though. So this was what, your third? At, was there a Chicago 20? You just skipped over that one. That was the greatest hits. Oh, um, gotcha. 82 to 89, yeah. Gotcha. So, so, but, so this is your third album. So you've been with the band four or five years at that point? Yeah, I was, I was in. I was in. It was just. It was just that moment where I felt I was being exposed for the fraud that I truly was. Mm. <laughs> so even after all that time, so that you were still worried about the saber tooth tiger. Exactly. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Just uh, fearful. Mm-hmm. Whereas, exactly. Now going back, if I had was able to say in my mind, what's the worst thing that could happen? And the worst thing that could happen is that. That I fry, as long as I don't die, I'd be okay with that, and that would relax me a bit more, right? Right. Um, when when would you say when did you get comfortable in your own skin in that role and realize this is me? You know, I'm in the zone. This is what I do. You know, e- even my bad days are better than most people's good days. You know, let, let's let's rock it. I'd say once once the the industry changed so much and and we weren't really recording mm-hmm. anymore, trying to make hit records, you know that there wasn't that pressure, uh, you know, on the band anymore. We realized we're just going to be able to play for as long as we want to because the the songbook that those, especially during the seventies, those guys created was so strong and people were going to want to come hear it. So. And, you know, I'd been in long enough and I was, I developed live, you know, to where I was more comfortable and got better. 
at it. And uh, so I'd say probably, you know, going into 1991, 92, you know, six, seven years into the band. And then really, I think when I completely felt like um, that I was not being too concerned of what other people were thinking much more, just really standing on my own two feet was when I started going to Nashville in like 2002, having met, um, actually having had one of the kids of Rascal Flats reach out to me saying, Hey, they were, they were just starting to come up and, and him saying, we're, you know, I'm a huge fan. Chicago is what made me want to play music. And I've particularly followed your career with the band because he was only, Jay DeMarcus was only 30 years old at the time. And that lit me up to realize I do have my own piece of the legacy now. And there's, there are people who have, uh, who I've helped, uh, add value to and inspire. So my career isn't in its 11th inning. If I want, I, it can actually, uh, have a, have another life here. So that's when I started going back there. And, and those original trips to Nashville culminated into Chicago 30. You know, we hadn't recorded a new record in a long time. And, and basically my trips back there were the catalyst. And that's when I realized, you know what, this is, this is, uh, even though we're not making hit records anymore, the industry just changed too much, but my input was, you know, was, was uh, stuff that was helping make things happen. So what, what makes people stay or go, you know, like in a band, you know, you've had people leave, you know, you, you came in because, um, you know, the big guy left. I mean, why? How come people aren't comfortable when when they got a good thing going, sticking with it? Is it is it just ego? Is it, you know, because I see businesses all the time. People come to me, I help them. A year or two later, three years later, they're falling apart. The business isn't doesn't exist anymore. You know, but they don't have albums and music. You know, where they get residuals. They just are out of business. You know what? What makes people give up a good thing? I wouldn't say in our band because, like I said, by the time I got here, seventeen years into it, they'd been through all of the potential ego trips. You know, being basically superstars in the seventies and then back again with their resurgence in the eighties. I think it's you know more an issue of uh, you know people want to do different things and and when the agendas don't line up. You know, and and it, their personalities too. It is, you know, it's a weird thing. It's a marriage, you know, without the sex. And <laughs> <laughs> thankfully, you know, there's a bunch of dudes standing around. But but it's, uh, you know, so I think that's. Hey, listen, I think people would be lying if they didn't say that after being together 47 years and almost 30, respectively, for me, that there haven't been times where I've I've wanted to not be there. You know. And, and, you know, we all get under each other's skin, but you, you work through it, yeah. you work through it, or, you know, if it's really something that you don't want to do anymore, you move on. Nope. So it, I don't really look at it so much as an ego thing with this, but I know what you mean. It can be if in the first few years, that's when you're really going to find out yeah. if it's about that. Well, cool, man. We are right at an hour. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time. Where? What do you want people to do? Do you want them to visit you online or follow yeah. you on Twitter? Where, where? Where should we send them? Why don't we do this? Um, you know, I'm I'm really, really getting into these webinars. And if people want to go to jasonchef.com, J-A-S-O-N-S-C-H-E-F-F.com, I actually, before I did this uh, interview with you, I created a little menu item at the top of my blog all the way to the right it says how to be a rock star and if they want to just click on that and and sign up for the uh the webinars you know i'm just kind of figuring out what it is i want to talk about and teach at this point it's like it's a little bit of uh music education uh, a little bit of storytelling and um and so it's just and, and building my tribe so if they want to come there it'd be great uh, Facebook, I'm on Facebook, but I'm kind of consolidating everything. But in yeah. general, um, but my site's probably the best way to, you know, if you want to, my, my opt-in, my, my lead magnet uh, is let me take you on the road with me or something like that, you know. <laughs> and I was like, you know, sign up and I'll send you a newsletter from the road, you know. So Yeah, very nice. 
All right, man. I will direct everyone there. Thank you, sir. And uh, let me know when you're heading back to SoCal. I enjoyed it, Wes. Always good to talk to you. All right, man. Have a great week. All right, buddy. See you. Bye. Now, I'm not someone that typically likes being serenaded by a dude and then having it recorded especially and then sharing it with the world willingly. But, you know, Jason, you got to do it. Let them run with it. So um, it's very cool. I, I shared that with a few of my friends um, before this went live, and they were, they were impressed, man. You know, I was like the cool dad on the cul-de-sac for a little while um, hearing Jason Chef serenade me. Uh, but look, um, in all seriousness, he, uh, like I said in the beginning, he is making things happen. He's looking for new ideas. He's branching out. Uh, he has no guarantees in what's going to work and what isn't, right? He's figuring out how to do webinars, how to do podcasts, how to really leverage social media, how to build a good website, uh, how to implement marketing automation. So look, you know, you see somebody that's a rock star, right? This guy's literally a rock star. And He's not even satisfied. So some might say, well, that's kind of sad and depressing. You know, I thought okay, somebody get to that level, they'd make it and just kick back. But in reality is entrepreneurs, by definition, we don't sit back. Okay. Yeah, we might enjoy the roses for a little while, but we've got to have our things, our hands in things, right? And he's, he's creative. Like he said, he, what he wants to do is what he wants to do. Okay, and what he wants to do is be creative. He wants to create. He wants to uh, write songs and make music and lead people, teach them, train them, okay, uh, create assets like he talked about. So, you know, I hope that gives you some encouragement, right, that even guys uh, that you see, you know, big celebrities, uh, musicians, rock stars uh, are still out there mixing it up, making things happen. So he's, he's slugging along, trudging along right with you, okay, figuring out this whole internet marketing, email marketing, e-commerce uh, thing. Uh, but as I always say, selling, you know, marketing is just selling in print, okay? In social media, first of all, you got to be social and just realize the media is not the message. It's just a way to deliver the message. So figure out what your audience, what your customers want, and then give it to them, okay? And use tools like social media, like podcasts, like direct mail, uh, use those to get the word out. You know, it's so funny. I talked about in the beginning, you know, uh, Chicago came to play here in my hometown, uh, and I didn't know they were coming until I saw it on a billboard, okay, driving down the interstate in my town. So they use multiple forms of media, right? They use billboards to get the word out. So if that works in your niche, then embrace it and run with it, okay? Don't, don't try to force the old square peg in a round hole, you know? The yellow pages can still work, especially if you're marketing to senior citizens. They still get the yellow pages and read it. So anyway, you get the point. But I loved his story. Like I said, he, he really opened up. He talked about how he, how he crashed and burned on Arsenio Hall, but they, they lived uh, through it. Um, but you need to understand the impact you have on others. Um, you need to realize also, like you talked about, you know, the fight or flight, the old saber tooth tiger kind of instinct. You know, we were wired just to survive, not to be happy. Um, but the saber tooth tigers are gone. So learn to relax a bit. Enjoy the moment. Realize nothing lasts forever, whether it's good or bad. Uh, get through it and get to the next thing, okay? Um, if you need help with selling, the next thing for you might be 30-day sales growth. So head on over to 30daysalesgrowth.com, enter promo code podcast, and save yourself a few bucks on that. Um, and that is content going back, man, almost a decade now. That's scary to think, uh, at least since I've been building the Sales Whisperer and really going back a couple of decades uh, when you look at my overall sales experience. So just the, the tools and the strategies, the verbiage, the scripts uh, that I've used to build my business, both when I was in corporate America and even now being on my own. So I hope you enjoy that. Uh, and as always, please remember to go out and share the love on social media. Give us a five-star review on iTunes. And remember to sell different. 